Newsday, and this is the scene of the British Open for 1953. And with us is the new British Open champion, America's champion, Ben Hogan. Ben has just concluded his second round here today at Tornisti, where the weather was changeable throughout the day. We had rain, we had a little sunshine, we had a little wind. It was probably the best day of play of the entire tournament, both the qualifying and the championship. Hogan has just come in with a record setting 68. He's in at 68, 282. Four players tied at 286 behind him. Well, Ben, I know this must be a great moment for you to have just won the British Open. Yes, it certainly is, John. I can't tell you how happy I am. And uh, the people have just been wonderful coming over here. I never saw such crowds. And uh, I think the whole of Scotland actually was pulling for me to win, along with uh, a lot of my friends in the United States. And I'm, I'm just so, so thankful that I have won. Well, Ben, today, I know you said nothing about this beforehand, but I know that you were playing with a cold. I know that you've not uh, felt your best the last three or four days. Uh, yet, uh, you were able to come up this morning, have a, a very fine 70, despite a 6 on the 17th hole, and come in and tie for the lead three-way point. At that time, uh, did you, you think that you had a good chance to come in and take it this afternoon? Well, yes, I did. Uh, when I went through the uh, fifth hole, one under par, I thought I had a good chance of winning if I could uh, just hold the one under and uh, maybe pick up another one someplace along the line. It's awfully difficult to get birdies here, and it's even harder to keep them after you get them. Uh, <laughs> that's that's uh, true. I, I had to do some wonderful putting this afternoon. I mean, the uh, same shot, that is, because uh, I was some uh, uh, 50 to 60 feet away from the hole on, on, on about the uh, last four or five holes, and I did marvelous putting. I don't, I'm not complimenting myself, but I got the ball down in two, which, which I think was the, was the uh, uh, thing that uh, let me win. Well, about those putts, uh, I might explain that uh, the second putt was seldom uh, too long a putt because Ben was putting that first one right to the pin. You mentioned the fifth hole. You were through the fifth hole this afternoon in one under fours. Uh, here at Carnoustie and I suppose throughout all Scotland, the scores are kept uh, level four rather than par or what a score might be. And uh, here this week, uh, we've had to learn how to keep it in level fours. Well, that's right. Well, now you were one under level fours uh, with a three on the fifth. Then that fifth hole is 388 yards. Uh, it has a burn running across it, as almost every hole here at Carnoustie does. And I think that you probably made the, the one shot there this afternoon that uh, set you on your way to winning this British Open. Uh, would you describe for us a little bit that uh, fifth hole? Uh, uh, yes, John. As a matter of fact, it did give me a terrific shot in the arm. Uh, I played a brassy off of the tee to stay short of the burn, and uh, I hit a five iron my second shot, and I landed on the green with the shot. Uh, and the ball uh, kicked to the left and kicked down right in the edge of the trap. It actually wasn't in the trap or it wasn't out of the trap. Half the ball was in and half of it was out. And uh, to me, that's about the most difficult shot uh, you could have. Plus the fact that I had to come up very, uh, very sharply, bring the ball up uh, and then make it run. Uh, well, as luck would have it, I, I hit this ball and uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, I just clipped it just right. The uh, ball took a terrific backspin and uh, well, it didn't go right in the hole. And folks, it did go in the hole. Well, that was the first time that we heard everybody on the course cheer at one time. Well, I cheered a little myself too, John. You were still cheering. Well, now, the, the uh, sixth hole is uh, a tough hole here. The sixth hole is 567 yards. And uh, I might I say that it's longer than that. I think it's about 600. <laughs> well, with a little wind, it, it can be 700. I'll say. Uh, you played that hole beautifully both times today. Uh, uh, this 567-plus yard hole, uh, Ben was right in front of the green with the second shot both times. And he latched on to a pair of fours there. Well, now this, uh, I think, was probably as troublesome a hole for the most, uh, most of the pros here in this British Open, uh, probably the most troublesome hole on the course. And today you were able to get uh, right in front of the green both times, and you played very fine chips there. Uh, I suppose uh, this afternoon your putt was, what, uh, three feet, probably? Oh, no, John, uh, it was about uh, four and a half, five feet, I'd say. Oh, that's that far? Yes, yes, it was. Well, it was uh, a, a wonderful chip from, uh, from your location after the uh, uh, second shot, your third up to the pin, and then the concentration, and when that one dropped, I think all of us uh, felt a little easier. Yes. Well, then the, the round, this afternoon's round, was uh, not without its moments of drama, not without its moments of highlights as we went on to the... The seventh hole, this hole had been costly in the second round. Uh, ben had taken a five there. He had had a three the first round, and he also had a three this morning. This afternoon, he just missed a, uh, another three and came
came up with a four. Then the little short eight hole, you almost uh, ran a deuce down on us there. That one missed by about four inches. Yeah, that's right. And the ninth hole, uh, that's 483 yards. And how many yards do you actually believe that hole is? Well, it's about 483. Well, uh, it's about the one of the toughest four cars I've that's ever seen. That's the longest looking hole. Well, since they have two bunkers right down the middle of the fairway where you want to drive, and there's just uh, there's just hardly any room to get around them. Uh, you have to play short of the left-hand bunker and and uh, hit a full two iron or a four wood in the green and hook it at the same time. It's, uh, uh, there are some shots here that I don't know much about. Well, that's the only green that's actually hidden uh, where the, the greenskeeper can't find it. I mean, it's back in the corner next to that railroad and next to the fence. Uh, the first two days, you had a little trouble finding the green. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what today? Both rounds around today, Ben found that uh, long, elusive ninth green, 483 yards away, and came up with a pair of fours. So that, at that point, uh, this afternoon, uh, Hogan was out in 34, two under level fours. By this time, we knew that the little man was rolling. I was interested in the number of people whom I heard in the gallery this afternoon who told how many miles they had come to see Hogan win the British Open. I didn't realize that all those people were from California, but they must have been to have come as long, as far away as that. At any rate, along about that time, I ran into a man who said he'll probably go 3-3-3 from here in. But uh, the next hole, the 10th hole, uh, you got a very fine three there this morning, rolled in a, a beautiful putt there. Uh, this afternoon, on the 10th hole, he came up with another wonderful drive. This hole is guarded by the deepest burn that there is on the court. The fourth hole, the 11th hole, I mean, was uh, a hole that I kept waiting for you to birdie all week, 368 yards, and I know that you must have expected to hold uh, some of those putts you had there, and yet you came up with four straight fours on that hole. I never said get, to the, get the, my uh, pitch shot to the hole. I don't know if it, uh, it would uh, uh, drag up too fast for me, and uh, although it's downhill from the front of the green, I just couldn't make myself get the ball up to the hole. And as a result, I always had uh, some place in the neighborhood of 20, 25 uh, footers there. And so the, the, the long hole, the 12th hole, is another par four, 467 yards. And today, you saved a very good four there. You were short uh, of the green with your second. That's right. And uh, you, you made a very fine shift there. I, I heard a number of the uh, uh, local fans complimenting you on the British-style shift you made on that one. A low pitch and run, wasn't it? Well, you have to use uh, British and American and South African and everything else to play this place. That's right, you do. <laughs> you have to mix them up quite a lot. We waited a long time to see Hogan get a deuce here. There are not many uh, short holes. Uh, the par threes are pretty well scattered, and one of the par threes is 250 yards, and you don't have many deuces on holes of that length. No, you don't. But uh, you ran one in this morning that uh, set the crowd off again, and... Uh, Came along and did the same thing on the same hole this afternoon, on the 13th. That's a 169-yard hole. Uh, how long was your putt there this morning, Ben? I'd say I had about an eight-footer this morning and uh, about 12 feet this afternoon. Uh, you were getting better. You, you holding it from 12 feet. Oh, yeah, good. Sure. But the one this morning was a beautiful putt, and uh, the one this afternoon, uh, somebody's umbrella got right in front of me, so I was unable to see that. <laughs> then you came up to the uh, 14th hole, and you lost the stroke. That's the only five you had this afternoon. That's right. 473 uh, yard hole. You were a little short with your second. Right. Well, I was going into the wind and I hit a four wood and uh, I ballooned it just a little bit uh, too much and uh, uh, the ball fell short and, and of course it roll on the green. My chip with a five iron was about uh, seven feet short and uh, I missed the putt. Well, the putt was, uh, was dead on line. It only stopped uh, uh, an inch and a half, two inches away from the hole. And uh, that was one of those that seemed to uh, get putty on it, as uh, some of the boys have been calling the greens here this week. Yes, uh, John, I've continually put it short here. I don't know why. I just couldn't get the ball to roll. Maybe it was the strangeness of a small ball or something, but uh, I thought I hit the ball hard enough, but, but uh, it just wouldn't go funny. Well, Ben, you were short on uh, on approach shots uh, more than I have seen you in, in a great many tournaments. Uh, that, was that because there was trouble beyond the green in a great many cases? or Oh, no, I just... Uh, I just missed it. didn't hit it hard enough, or the ball had stopped faster than I thought it would. Yeah. Well, that often uh, happened. I mean, you had uh, a lot of quick bites today, on, and then yes. it hit what looked to be the same type shot uh, two holes later, and it would run 20 feet. Yes. Uh, right. Did you have that? Uh, is that the way it looked to you? Well, yes. Uh, well, those are those are made to run on purpose. I was determined to make a ball run here. And uh, some of them did. Some of them did this afternoon, yes. Well, the 15th of afternoon, now we're heading off. The town had really gone tremendous by 
this time. People were seeing, instead of every other hole, they had decided to see every third hole. And the 15th crowd, the 15th green was surrounded, I suppose, the people were 10, 12 feet deep all around it, standing on little hills, crags, uh, standing on chairs, benches, anything they could stand on. I heard one British gentleman make a, a great uh, mark of, I guess you would call it, real uh, honor when he offered to let his wife stand on his toes so she could see over the crowd of the people in front. <laughs> And uh, Ben satisfied them. He had a very comfortable four at the 15th. Then we came up to the 16th, which has been somewhat of a joiner to all of our American pros here. The, the short hole we were talking about, it's only 250 yards, but it's a tough hole. And the first three, the first two rounds, uh, there was not a three among them. Stranahan, Hogan, and Mangrum all had fours there. Today, Ben latched onto a pair of threes. Uh, you you moved to a, a wood. You had well, three wood, four wood there today. Oh, I Grassy both times. Did you? Uh, yes, that hole is about uh, 240 yards, I think, and this afternoon we were going into a little breeze. and uh, It was, it was raining at that point, too. Landed right on the front of the green and two putted happily for my food. Well, that first putt uh, brought quite a gasp from the crowd there. That one must have come up uh, pretty close. Yes, I was real happy to see that one roll up. Well, the hole that I was happy to see behind, Ben, was the 17th. This morning we were, uh, uh, were standing by at the 17th, and... Uh, things went bad. Uh, Hogan had a beautiful drive, and then the second shot landed in the bunker. The third was out, and that was the second uh, three-putt green of the morning. So uh, it looked like this 68 was going to be on the board this morning, but uh, I'm glad we got it this afternoon. But a six there this morning. Now, as you came up to 17, you uh, uh, you played the brassy again off the tee? No, I hit a four-wood this afternoon. The wind was a little stronger back of me. I had a four-wood between the two burns. That's what you have to do there. You can't possibly take anything else. And then I uh, played a full four iron about as hard as I could nail it and two putted for a four. And a very beautiful four. Then on the last hole, now the crowd was really excited. They were standing around. I talked with some of the representatives of the Royal and Ancients here who said that never before had there been a more popular champion. They all wanted to see Hogan hold it out on the last hole. Get a wonderful drive. That drive, I believe, as long as any you hit all week. Must have been 280. 290 somewhere? No, well, not that long, uh, John. I was going against the wind, and I'd say it was maybe 250, 260, something like that. A beautiful soft shot into the green, two putts. He was in with a 68, a new course record, and he was in with the British Open title. And thank you very much, Ben Hogan. Thank you, John. This is John Derry from Carnoustie.